everybody you're watching new egg tv my name's steve and today in the studio we have john clark from amd's fire pro team john how are you man good thanks for having me dude thank you so much for coming in i know you've actually done several videos with us for all of the uh the fire pro series launches so thank you very much for coming in once again because of course we have a brand new uh w series that has been launched from amd uh, using the new GCN architecture, right? That's right. So brand new with the W Series cards, um, all of our cards now offer twice the frame buffer over previous gen cards, nice. which is pretty incredible. Um, also, AMD Fire Pro is the only professional card in the market that supports six displays on one graphics card. Oh, okay. um, so that's okay. AMD Ifinity. It's been around for a number of years, mm -hmm. and it's uh, our multi-display technology. Definitely, five um, and six displays. I mean, the, correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In, uh, in addition. Um, all of our cards now support 4K displays, which are now coming onto the market. Um, and if we take a look at our entry level, even the W2100, which runs at 26 watts, which we'll talk about, <laughs> um, supports 4K display. Excellent. And uh, so it, even on the W4100, W5100, you can see that we don't have any DVI connectors uh, on there anymore because the DVI is limited to 2560 resolution. Mm -hmm. um, to support 4K displays, even on uh, these cards, uh, all of the connectors have been converted to DisplayPort. Excellent, yeah, because I mean, DVI, it's, it's kind of on its way out anyways, and so many other people will probably be more interested in seeing DisplayPort only, so it's looking to the future, especially the 26 watt TDP, that's, that's crazy, or not TDP, uh, total usage, that's amazing. Yes, absolutely, wow. and we'll cover these cards a little later, yes. but I do have a couple other points I want to point out for these brand new, uh, the WX100 series, is that in addition, um, all of these cards now have the latest gen GCN ASICs. Mm -hmm. um, and that provides a number of different benefits. Uh, a couple to name are uh, increased performance, um, both in compute and graphics. Um, also, the ASICs support the latest gen APIs. Okay. So um, we have OpenCL 2.0 coming onto the market now, That's right. which is the next gen OpenCL supporting um, high performance computing. All of our cards support that. And uh, as well, we're always on the, on the cutting edge for API support. So um, DirectX 11.2, um, we're ready for DirectX 12 when it comes out. Right. Uh, in addition, OpenGL 4.4 um, for professional level applications. We're always supporting the latest and greatest for those applications as well. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, and that's also not to be confused, guys, with uh, the gaming side. I mean, Radeon, Radeon cards are awesome for gaming. These cards, although they probably could play games, right? They are not the, they are not, made for that. I mean, these are certified to use uh, CAD engineering uh, professionals in general, so something to keep in mind. Absolutely. I mean, these cards can definitely play games. They do support the latest DirectX. Um, but as you pointed out, these cards are different in that they are cer certified for professional level applications. Right. So we have a, an ISV team um, that's dedicated to partner with the vendors of those applications to make sure that the driver's running reliably, stably, um, and um, and is also certified ahead of time. Yeah, I mean, stable, obviously, absolutely the most important thing. You don't want things crashing or not working properly, and you need them to be perfectly accurate, so. Exactly, and in addition, um, you'll find that AMD Fire Pro is always branded AMD Fire Pro, and mm -hmm. for the, the reason for that is that AMD is the sole manufacturer and designer, and they provide also the specifications for the cards. Um, and totally under AMD's control then. Exactly. Excellent. So uh, just because there is a little bit of confusion out there about this, myself included, uh, so there are AMD Sapphire, uh, Sapphire does have AMD cards, they do manufacture Radeon cards, and I've mm -hmm. also seen them on Fire Pro cards. Uh, why, so that's definitely still AMD, they're just, what are they distributing then? Or Yes. Or? Okay. So when you get the box, um, the retail box, You'll see on the box it says that Sapphire is the global distributor for AMD Fire Pro, and gotcha. they are, are a one source for distributing all of AMD Fire Pro worldwide. Fascinating. All right, so what about the interface? Are you guys, uh, I'm assuming, still using PCIe Gen 3? Yes, so PCIe Gen 3 is really important for AMD Fire Pro. Um, AMD Fire Pro is actually first to market to support uh, PCIe Gen 3 back in 2012. Nice. Um, with this generation of cards, it's still very important um, because more and more of the applications that are coming out of the market today in the professional market um, are heterogeneous mm -hmm. in that they're written to run both on the CPU and the GPU simultaneously. Right. So for the side that's running on the GPU, we have compute um, running on OpenCL, um, coming out OpenCL 2.0. Okay. We also have graphics, OpenGL 4.4, um, and it's really important that we have the PCI Gen 3 bus in there because it has the highest bandwidth possible to support the compute side of that. Absolutely. equation. Yeah, you absolutely need to have as much bandwidth as possible because you're just going to be throwing numbers constantly to that GPU and, and letting it run everything through. And That's right. obviously you need to be able to talk to the CPU as fast as possible too and give it everything it can. So. Exactly. 
All right, John, so I'm, I'm a little bit more familiar with the gaming side of AMD's Radeon cards and their market as opposed to the Fire Pro side, and that's obviously more for CAD design and, and, the, and the pros out there that are doing this for paycheck. Um, can you kind of describe a couple more, more of the markets in general? AMD Fire Pro is uh, targeted for several different markets, and they cover a wide set of use cases. Mm -hmm. um, CAD and engineering is a big market for AMD Fire Pro. Um, there are a lot of different professional level applications that uh, are used for designing parts, for example, designing products. Uh, there's also the media and entertainment that heavily utilizes the graphics performance and the compute performance within the Fire Pro. Uh, there are also, uh, there's also the medical uh, industry that has medical displays that um, need to run off of the Fire Pro technology, mm -hmm. as well as finance that is typical for running multiple displays. Nice. We have some growth markets as well, so digital signage with 4K displays coming on, uh, all, as I mentioned, all of our Fire Pro cards support 4K displays, so that's a growth market for us, as well as GPU compute, because we have OpenCL 2.0 coming up um, with the Fire Pro uh, running on OpenCL 2.0 applications. Mm -hmm. um, we can accelerate those applications, and uh, a lot of applications are coming out that are running on OpenCL 2.0. Excellent. Uh, so then maybe I have, I have more of a layman's question for you then. Is there any real advantage to purchasing more than one card? And, and I noticed these particular cards may not run in Crossfire, but uh, are there any advantages to running multiple cards, multiple Fire Pro cards? Sure. So the number of different applications will be able to take advantage of multiple Fire Pro cards. Okay. Um, typically, those applications are designed for compute mm -hmm. uh, in the media and entertainment uh, for real-time color correction up to, for example, 6K resolution, okay. um, accelerating, uh, utilizing, for example, four W9100s, they can real, uh, color correct a 6K fo uh, video footage wow. in real time, which is pretty incredible. Wow, that's really um, fast. All right, so basically, John, what you're saying is having multiple cards in there, regardless if they're, they're set up for Crossfire or not, uh, are actually going to take advantage of the extra cores, either by maybe a drop down inside of the software and selecting that separate GPU, or it'll just recognize that there's, there's more available horsepower and, and utilize it. So for the cards that are designed for compute, uh, you'll be able to utilize all of the cards that the system recognizes okay. in that application. All right, John, so let's uh, jump right into the W2100 and, and look at each one of the cards uh, individually. Sure, absolutely. So starting off with the W2100, um, this is brand new for the series of Fire Pro cards. Uh, this replaced the V3900. It's also a small form factor, low profile card. Okay. Um, what's nice about this card and what's new is that it's running in 26 watt power envelope. Wow. Yeah, and as you can see, there's, there's not a DVI connector now. It's been replaced with a display port to support 4K. Excellent. Um, so for any customers that are, that are looking for a low profile, uh, small uh, power footprint, um, mm -hmm. they can run 4K display off of 26 watts now. Excellent. And then I guess moving on to the 3100, is it? This is actually the W4100. Um, this will replace the V4900, which would be the previous gen. Mm. Um, this is a interesting card because uh, the V4900 was actually a full height card. Okay. The W4100, as you can see, is a half height card. And also the V4900 had uh, a single DVI connector and two display port. As you can see, this has been consolidated down into four mini display ports. Excellent. So now we can run uh, four uh, discrete HD displays off of the W4100 for um, display wall, financial markets would be perfect for this card. And it's also low profile too, so you can drop it into probably a smaller chassis as well. Exactly. Excellent. And uh, one thing I also mentioned is this is 50 watt power envelope, oh. and two gig frame buffer. Okay. Um, previous gen was one gig frame buffer, and back on the 2100, also two gig frame buffer as well. So double the frame buffer on all of our cards. Except for, the w for not, not, except for the W9100, which we'll get to. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We'll, we'll get to that one. That's the most exciting one. Uh, so then the W5100. W5100, uh, upgrade from the W5000. Again, no DVI uh, port on this. Mm -hmm. We have four full-size display port on there, supporting 4K displays. Uh, this is an 8 gig frame buffer card now, up from 4 gig of the W5000, and the same power envelope, 100, uh, sorry, 75 watt. 75 watt, and it's a single slot design as well yeah. as the, the prior two, and this exactly. one as well. So the W7100, uh, you guys just released this, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. Right? This is an 8 gig frame buffer card now, up from 4 gig. The, um, the card it replaced was the W7000. Excellent. Um, this is also fitting in a 150 watt power envelope and supporting 4K displays on the four full size display port output. Awesome. So that was the Tonga? Uh, chip was it? Correct. This Tonga. is the next gen GCN called Tonga. 
Excellent. And because that, that means that these two are both the Hawaii chips. Correct. Right? Uh, but we'll start with the W8100 first. So the <laughs> W8100 is a replacement of the W8000. So we've also doubled the frame buffer up to 8 gig of the, for the W8100. Uh, we have four full-size DisplayPort, um, all 4K enabled, and uh, fitting inside a 190-watt 190 190 power envelope. Excellent. And this is the uh, first of the last two cards that actually have uh, double width as opposed to single width. Correct. Uh, and then finally, on to the, the absolute best of the best is the W9100. Yes. So this is our ultra high-end AMD FirePro W9100, replacing the W9000, fitting inside the same power envelope of around uh, 275 watt. Mm -hmm. It has six mini display port output. Um, we can actually run six 4K displays simultaneously off of this card at 30 hertz, or we can run three 4K displays at 60 hertz. Wow, that's that's awesome. And uh, especially the fact that, that you guys have now introduced uh, Hawaii uh, GCN tech, tech into these new W series cards. That's amazing, John. Yes, and I also have to mention on the W9100, uh, mm -hmm. we've increased the memory frame buffer by over two and a half times over the previous gen. That's right. So the W9000 had six gig frame buffer, and now the W9100 has 16 gig frame buffer. That's a lot of video memory, <laughs> 16 gigabytes, wow. Yeah, so the reason we did that is because of market demand and the applications that are coming onto the market. More and more are uh, uh, compute enabled. Mm -hmm. uh, running more information on the GPU allows uh, those applications to run even faster because we can cache more information in that large frame buffer. Excellent, yeah, and obviously the more that you can put inside that frame buffer, the faster everything else is exactly. gonna go. Just keep feeding that, uh, that Hawaii chip. That's right. Wow, John, well thank you so much for taking the time to come in here again. Thank you. Absolutely. And thank you guys also for watching today's show. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is at youtube.com forward slash Newegg. And until then, we'll see you guys very soon.